When it comes to making videos, they say never work with children or animals. So we'll see how this goes. Today's video is brought to you by Sign Now. SignNow API is a powerful e-signature tool that's simple enough to deploy today thanks to detailed documentation, but flexible enough to grow with your business with powerful API, fast sharing, reusable templates, and custom branding. Your customers will be sending and signing documents in no time. Don't let other e-sign tools price you out of business. With SignNow, you'll only ever pay for what you use. Get the tools you need to upgrade your workflow at signnow.com by following the link down in the video description and get 250 legally binding signatures for free. That's signnow.com. And again, thanks to SignNow for sponsoring today's video. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. One of the most critical pieces of management hardware in the server world is IPMI, or Intelligent Platform Management Interface. It's an option included with many servers that allows for bare metal machine access over the network. IPMI interfaces are usually system on chip CPUs integrated directly onto a server motherboard. While they draw power from the motherboard and server power supply, they are their own independent circuitry and are essentially a tiny low powered computer inside of your server. Of course, there are more than a few problems with the current IPMI offering from server OEMs. IPMI is not an entirely ubiquitous feature in servers, as there is quite a bit of cost involved to integrate it onto motherboards. Not only is IPMI usually its own SOC solution, it also has to have data paths to any sensors, ATX buttons, or other monitored hardware inside of the server. As such, many systems will ship without IPMI at all, or with the hardware present but behind a license wall before you can use it. Even worse, many vendors will only support IPMI versions for a set number of years, meaning if you want to keep a server running beyond the vendor's end-of-life schedule, you may be stuck running outdated and vulnerable software with bare metal access to your servers. I know some of you still need to have Java runtime running locally just to run ProLiant IPMI or iDRAC through Internet Explorer 9. You know who you are. So, short of just upgrading a server or paying out the nose for licensing software for hardware that you already own, what's a systems administrator to do? This is the Bly KVM PCIe, a product from Blycube that puts a computer into your computer so you can do your computing from a different computer. In all seriousness, we're looking at a PCI Express add-in card that aims to replace KVM functionality of IPMI, giving you the same bare metal access to a PC, but in a modular standalone system. If you're not familiar, PyKVM is an open source project aimed at delivering a KVM over IP solution using a Raspberry Pi single board computer. There are official versions from PyKVM that run on either a Pi 3, a Pi 4, or using a Raspberry Pi compute module. But this project being open source allows other makers or businesses to tinker and modify both the hardware or software to fit their own particular needs. Blycube's BlyKVM is running PyKVM at its heart on a Raspberry Pi CM4, but in a custom designed PCI Express carrier board. While the board slots into a PCI Express slot, it is in no way connected to the PC over PCI Express, as neither power or data are supplied by the host. Instead, you can power the board using USB-C, or what I would recommend, via power over Ethernet. On the rear of the Bly KVM are the aforementioned USB-C power port, along with a gigabit Ethernet port for PoE and network. The KVM functionality is handled by an HDMI input, along with a second USB-C, which both connect to the host PC to allow for video capture, along with emulation of various peripherals. Internally, the Bly KVM has a USB header, which allows for direct serial or I2C connections to the host with the included cable. There are also headers to connect your standard front I.O. cables, your power and reset buttons, and front LEDs. This allows you to control power directly from the Pi KVM, meaning even if the host is powered down, you can still turn it on remotely. Or, worst case scenario, in the event of a full lockup, you can turn the host off remotely too. The HDMI input allows video signals up to 1080p and 60Hz, and can comfortably display in full color video at up to 30 frames per second. Keep in mind, you're not going to be doing any gaming with one of these, as there is a noticeable amount of latency, but it's certainly fast enough for remote administration and remote desktop purposes, and is far better than a lot of IPMI-based video solutions that I've used in the past. At $215 with the included Raspberry Pi CM4, 
I'm not sure this is going to be cropping up in many home labs. I've built entire servers that cost less than this card. But the Black AVM could be a very useful device for remote IT support in both small and medium sized businesses. Circling back to the beginning of this video, IPMI can be a very expensive add-on for new servers, and that's before you get into licensing with some of the big boys like Dell, HP, or Cisco. Dell, for example, licenses iDRAC9 Enterprise starting at around $300 for an individual server. And while it is a perpetual license, there's no guarantee that you'll still be receiving updates for platform changes or security four years down the line. And while you can't use PyKVM to monitor fan speed, system temps, or drive health, there are a number of open source tools, like Observium, that can manage all of that for you. I made a handy tutorial for getting that set up about a year ago if you're interested in seeing what it can do. On top of being less expensive than first party solutions, running a PyKVM system like BlyKVM means your deployments are vendor agnostic. Your remote management isn't tied to the server hardware that you purchase. Whether you deploy a Dell or a Supermicro, your management interface can be identical across your entire environment or across multiple client sites. Not being tied to a particular OEM, along with using open source software where possible, is something I always strived for when I was deploying servers for businesses. It meant that even if I wasn't the one providing long-term support to a company, they'd be able to find someone who could support them without much issue. There are a couple other features that I really like inside PyKVM that just aren't available on other major IPMI-based servers. The ability to copy and paste text strings directly from your PC and execute them in a terminal on the remote server. That could be great for running scripts or installing software remotely. And on top of bare metal KVM access, the USB connection allows the host to emulate an optical drive and attach ISOs to boot from. Let's see Ventoy do that. In testing out the device, I was able to turn on and fully install Proxmox without ever setting foot in my garage or even getting up from my desk, saving me not only time, but preventing me from standing in my 36 degree garage for 20 minutes just to get an OS installed. Now that's just me here at my house. Compare that example with the cost of deploying a new server to an out-of-state client or a branch office with no on-site technician. The normal process for that would be to receive the server at your local site, install any required software or services, then ship it to the remote office and hope that not only someone is able to connect it to the network properly, but that the server would fully function when it arrived. Flying a technician out is also not off the table for a lot of organizations. That's a lot of time and expense for a business to go through just to deploy a single server. But rather than going through that headache, you could just have an employee at your remote office connect the server to the network and then fully deploy and configure an OS and services without ever leaving the office or the comfort of your technician's own home. So the Bly KVM, a commercial hardware evolution of an open source project designed to bring enterprise level features to a level that any business can afford it. I'm a huge fan of projects exactly like this, be it TrueNAS, FreePBX, Proxmox, PFSense, or any other countless open source project that has become a cornerstone of business and infrastructure. The Bly KVM PCIe is available as seen here with the Raspberry Pi CM4 for $215 directly from their website. They also have other options from packages without a CM4 included or external and rack mount solutions based around the Raspberry Pi 3 and Raspberry Pi 4 Model B computers. Links for where to find them will be down in the video description. Make sure to go give those a look. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Mastodon at Craft Computing at hostx.social for daily shenanigans like this. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon. Link is down in the video description. That's going to do it for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers and Happy New Year, everyone. for today is from Deluxe Brewing Company. It is the Scintillator Doublebach Craft Beer, clocking in at 8%. Rhett already has a Rainier, so I'm not going to share. Scintillator Doppelbach, 8%. Here we go. Boy, very, very rich middle of this body um 
it's almost toffee like uh like like go with your grandparents like werther's original or something like that it's a very creamy rich malt flavor in the center of this one i quite like that this is a german inspired beer that's not gonna make you think too much about why you enjoy it it's not overly complex it it really does a couple of things right without getting too much into the weeds. If you want a good introduction to some of the German flavor profiles uh, without going all the way into, you know, the, the Weiss beers and, you know, Hefs and uh, way into the weeds with those kind of things, I think this will introduce you to some of those, those maltier Irish reds and Doppelbox and, and things like that without making you think too hard about why you should or shouldn't like it. Solid beer. I like it.